Um, the Lord caught up with me a few years ago, and when I saw the generation, it was like the Lord opened my eyes to see the 414 window and the generation. And I remember just being overwhelmed with this thought that I'm missing it, where I just felt like I spend so much of my time pouring everything that I have and working so hard to bring Christ to the people that are the hardest to reach. I mean, the adults are the hardest to reach, by far. And the ones who are the most, who have the softest hearts towards Christ and towards the truth are the ones that we ignore. And so I, I had this kind of repentant time where I, I came to the Lord and I said, I'm so sorry for ignoring something that's so important to you. And then I think I went through kind of a Habakkuk 2 kind of experience of saying, well, then what? What is it? What, what do you want me to do? You know, what, what can I do for this generation? And what I discovered is that I truly believe that um, God has given dreams and visions and given passion and given strategies to so many of us in the body of Christ, but we've let them die. And we've been, we've been taken up and, and distracted away from or pulled away from those things um, by, you know, what's convenient, what's easy, those things that can be done and kind of seem to have more relevancy because we're connected to more of the adults, you know, and the older people around us. And, and oftentimes because financially it's more lucrative, you know, to do ministry to adults. You know, children don't really pay tithes. But there are so many dreams that have died in our hearts, dreams that God gave us the blueprints of his heart for this generation, and so many of us have allowed them to die. And um, I just believe that God is breathing on those things, and God is calling forth those things in so many of us to come back to life. And, you know, my experience of seeking God and saying, well, Lord, what can I do? And, it, you know, the Lord gives the vision. And, but then the third part of that, and after kind of the repentance and kind of the seeking, then kind of comes this moment where you're saying, well, what price am I willing to pay? Am I willing to pay Am I willing to go beyond the easy thing? Am I willing to do the hard thing for this generation? You could change the world. You could, you could be used by God to transform an entire generation. They're really waiting, but there is a price. There is. There's a price to be paid in, in prayer, yeah, but there's also blood in the deal. There's got to be blood in the deal. I have a friend who always asks me, Mark, if there's no blood in the deal, I'm not interested, you know. And there's got to be blood in the deal. There's, we've, we've got to be willing to go that far for us to see God elevate us into something that goes far beyond what we could ever possibly do alone. And yet that is what God's offering us for this generation. And is the church willing to do that? Are pastors willing to do that? Are Christian leaders willing to do that? To do the inconvenient thing, to do the hard thing, to do the thing that requires us to leave our comfort zones, to go out, to, to, to break down walls and barriers, to to learn and to reach out um, and to pursue those things that God has already spoken to us, that he's breathing to life again. Mm -hmm.